1,000 subscribers. Hot dog. This is the first major hurdle in my rise to YouTube stardom. Nothing's gonna stop me from hitting 1 million subscribers now. I suppose I owe it to the fans for getting me this far, so in honor of my newfound status as internet royalty, as well as the fact that people only seem to watch my Kirby videos, I say we celebrate this momentous occasion with a new character analysis. Unfortunately, the Kirby character analysis is going to take way more time than what would allow me to get this video done so soon, but fortunately, enough people have pointed out that there's actually a fourth main Kirby character. So, as a small token of gratitude to everyone who got me to this point, I think I'll give you all what you've been asking for. Bandana Waddle Dee is the fourth main character of the Kirby franchise, and while he hasn't been in as many games as the other three, his popularity within the fanbase would certainly suggest otherwise. In this video, we're going to be looking at Bandana Waddle Dee's appearances throughout the main series Kirby games to try to build the most fleshed out version of the character. However, for this video, I'm also going to be looking at spin-off games, since Bandana Waddle Dee's main series appearances are more let's say limited than the other characters, and maybe those games could help shed some light on why this little guy is so beloved for more than just his looks. Alright, that's enough rambling from me. Let's get started. Bandana Waddle Dee made his first appearance in Kirby Superstar, released for the Super Nintendo in 1996. Bandana Waddle Dee is typically thought of as a representative of the more modern era of Kirby games, but he actually debuted pretty early in the franchise. In this game, he takes the role as Kirby's first opponent in the sub-game Megaton Punch. I would say that this mode shows that Bandana Waddle Dee has the strength to crack Popstar in a single punch, but this is clearly a minigame that exaggerates the abilities of Kirby and the other enemies, so all that can be gathered from this appearance is that Bandana Waddle Dee exists. Now, Bandana Waddle Dee's next official appearance isn't until 2008, However, I'd probably never hear the end of it if I didn't talk about Kirby 64 in this video. So, Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards was released for the Nintendo 64 in 2000. Bandana Waddle Dee does not appear in this game, which begs the question of why I'm even talking about it. This game does feature a Waddle Dee, but he lacks the bandana. This Waddle Dee is the first victim of Dark Matter's possession which Kirby saves him from, causing Waddle Dee to join Kirby and Ribbon on their journey. Throughout the adventure, he helps Kirby through various situations, typically using some kind of vehicle. He's undoubtedly helpful, and his appearances usually provide a nice change of gameplay, but the question at large still persists. Is this Waddle Dee the same Waddle Dee that would become Bandana Waddle Dee? Personally, I could go either way. There's nothing to disprove this theory, but there's nothing really to support it either. Outside of Bandana Waddle Dee taking Waddle Dee's spot alongside the rest of the 64 crew in Adeline's reveal trailer for Star Allies. But just as well, in the actual game, Waddle Dee is represented by a generic parasol Waddle Dee with the rest of the 64 crew. There's reasons to support or deny this theory, but I think Waddle Dee's role in this game would definitely serve as inspiration to what Bandana Waddle Dee would become. A cute, helpful, if a bit dopey team member who's loyal to Kirby and King DDD. Bandana Waddle Dee's official second appearance is in Kirby Superstar Ultra, released for the DS in 2008, where he continued to just be the absolute worst at Megaton Punch. Bandana Waddle Dee appears in two sub-games in this remake, the first being the Arena, a boss rush mode. The original game featured a Waddle Dee who, for no explainable reason, snuck its way into the Arena and, even though it has a massive health bar, swallow it, it's just a Waddle Dee. Superstar Ultra's arena replaces this generic Waddle Dee with Bandana Waddle Dee, who is just as harmless and just as easy to take down. The big sub-game to look at is Revenge of the King. I've talked about this sub-game in more depth in my DDD analysis, but Bandana Waddle Dee plays the role as DDD's second-in-command, keeping the king calm under pressure, calling in mini-bosses, and sticking with the king until the bitter end, even giving an attempt to take on Kirby himself, which goes... Yeah. It's interesting that Bandana Waddle Dee's first major appearance pits him against Kirby, and shows him off as a loyal support to King Dedede, albeit a bit of a coward. And even after Kirby defeats him and Dedede, he continues to support his king in whatever future endeavors lie ahead. Bandana Waddle Dee's next appearance is in Kirby's Return to Dreamland, released for the Wii in 2011. This is the big one. This is the game that ignited the love for Bandana Waddle Dee into the hearts of every Kirby fan.
Bandana Waddle Dee doesn't just appear in this game, he's a main playable character alongside series heavyweights Kirby, King Dedede, and Meta Knight. This guy, this absolute lad whose track record consists of pathetically losing to Kirby. He's the one who gets to help Kirby, Dedede, and Meta Knight fix Magalore's ship? Yeah, why wouldn't he be? In an interview with Nintendo Dream, Shinya Kumazaki, the director of Kirby's Return to Dreamland, as well as general director for the series since 2008, stated that Bandana Waddle Dee was originally going to be called Bandy, but the name was scrapped to make the character more recognizable. This also allowed Bandana Waddle Dee to act as a representative of the Waddle Dees as a whole. It makes a lot of sense. Kirby, Dedede, and Meta Knight are the only consistent characters from game to game. And even then, DDD and Meta Knight have missed out on a game here or there. The only other constant throughout the franchise are the enemies, with Waddle Dees being the most common and iconic enemy. So it makes sense that the character that represents this series regular would get the player 4 spot over more niche characters like Gooey or Adeline. That's Bandana Waddle Dee's background though. As for his role in this game, it's a huge improvement over his last game. Instead of being completely defenseless, Bandana Waddle Dee wields a spear and can put up just as much of a fight as Dreamland's top warriors, with his most iconic abilities being the Spear Throw, Moon Drop, Multi Spear Attack, and the Impractical Spear Copter, which is just the best. In cutscenes, he's just part of the group and doesn't really have any standout moments of character, but his arena description refers to him as a brave warrior, as well as everyone's idol. If you can go from a glorified foot soldier to a defender of Dreamland, then that is something to be inspired by. Kirby Triple Deluxe and Kirby Planet Robobot both released for the 3DS in 2014 and 2016 respectively. I'm talking about both games at once since Bandana Waddle Dee plays the same role in both games, and it's a minor role at that. Bandana Waddle Dee appears before mini boss and boss fights to give Kirby a healing item, and that's it. No major role in either game's story, he just hands out items. Alright, moving on. Kirby Star Allies is the latest main series Kirby game as of this video, released for the Nintendo Switch in 2018. Bandana Waddle Dee, once again, doesn't have any role in the game's story. He exists solely as an ally slash multiplayer character with the same moveset he had in Kirby's Return to Dreamland, with an additional move unique to him, the Ground Thrust. The fact that Spear isn't a copy ability in this game like it was in Kirby's Return to Dreamland helps to make Bandana Waddle Dee stand out as his own character, but that's really all there is to talk about regarding this game. So that's Bandana Waddle Dee in the main series Kirby games, but what about the spin-offs? Kirby Mass Attack released for the DS in 2011. Bandana Waddle Dee makes a cameo appearance in the Strato Patrol EOS subgame alongside Sailor Waddle Dee cheering on Meta Knight. Wow. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse released for the Wii U in 2015. Now we're talking, Bandana Waddle Dee is a multiplayer character again, but he appears in cutscenes alongside Kirby as the story progresses, and the co-op mode adds enemies that only he can defeat. Even if his role is completely optional, it is nice to see Bandana Waddle Dee shine on his own without help from King Dedede or Meta Knight. Team Kirby Clash is a free-to-play digital game for the 3DS released in 2017, and Super Kirby Clash is a free-to-play digital game released for the Switch in 2019. These two are very similar games. Like, almost the same game. And Bandana Waddle Dee watches over the gem apple tree that can be harvested after a certain amount of time, with the gem apples acting as a form of currency for the game. That's it. Kirby Battle Royale was released for the 3DS in 2017. With the game releasing well into the Switch's lifespan, I'm sure a lot of people don't even know there was a 3D Kirby fighting game. And I'm sure even less people know Bandana Waddle Dee plays a major role in the game's story mode. In this game, King DDD is holding DDD's Cake Royale, a fighting invitational where the winner gets a big cake. Naturally, Kirby enters, but Bandana Waddle Dee also enters because of the prospect of cake. He's never been portrayed as a big eater before, but this characterization puts him in line with Kirby, DDD, and pretty much every other character in the franchise. As the tournament progresses, Bandana Waddle Dee becomes Kirby's partner and the two easily make it through the ranks. With Bandana Waddle Dee a little nervous of having to keep up with Kirby, but the two even manage to defeat Meta Knight. Bandana Waddle Dee thinks it's a fluke. 
but Meta Knight tells them that they showed their true strength and defeated him fairly. Later, when they have to take on King Dedede, Bandana Waddle Dee still refers to him as Your Majesty, and feels hopeless before the fight. Even though he's loyal to the king, he helps Kirby beat him not only in the tournament, but in the final battle against the DD Destroyer Z. My last note about Bandana Waddle Dee in Kirby Battle Royale is that this game sees him wielding a parasol instead of his trademark spear. It makes sense that the character representative of the Waddle Dees would be skilled with the weapon most associated with them. Spear is present in the game, so there's no reason Bandana Waddle Dee couldn't use his spear. And we don't have an explained reason why he uses a parasol over his spear. My personal theory is that parasol more aligns with his characterization in this game, being more meek and goofy than he's usually portrayed in the main series. It also helps him stand out from the Waddle Dee soldiers that appear in the tournament, who use spears themselves. It's all speculative, but either way, this is the most character we've seen from Bandana Waddle Dee, almost a decade after his reintroduction to the series. The latest Kirby game Bandana Waddle Dee appears in is Kirby Fighters 2, released digitally for the Switch in 2020. Bandana Waddle Dee is a playable character in this game, using the same moveset he has in Star Allies, which is essentially the same moveset he's had since Kirby's Return to Dreamland. He's initially the only buddy Kirby can choose for single player mode, matching his role as Kirby's partner in Kirby Battle Royale, but he doesn't have any specific role in the game's story and is just another character on the roster. And that's every game Bandana Waddle Dee has appeared in, main series and spin-off. So, who is Bandana Waddle Dee? Bandana Waddle Dee is one of Kirby's closest allies, fiercely loyal to King Dedede, and one of Dreamland's brave heroes. He was introduced as a bit of a joke character, but later became a strong fighter along the likes of Dedede, Meta Knight, and even Kirby himself. Battle Royale paints him as slightly timid, but still a capable fighter. And that's really it. Bandana Waddle Dee doesn't have much in the way of character, definitely a lot less to discuss than Dedede and Meta Knight. This makes sense since he's been MIA from the series for 12 years, but for such a popular character, you'd really expect there to be more to this plucky hero. But does Bandana Waddle Dee's lack of character make him any less lovable than his comrades? If anything, it only serves to make him more endearing. He's an underdog compared to the others, and the fact that he's a relatively blank slate in a series of well-defined, personality-filled characters is what allows fans to latch onto him. He's whatever we make of him, and I think that's pretty cool. Bandana Waddle Dee was designed to be representative of the Waddle Dees, which if you've seen advertisements like on the Kirby Twitter or Japan's Kirby Cafe, Waddle Dees are secondary mascots for the series alongside Kirby. This makes Bandana Waddle Dee, who represents the most basic enemy in the series, an ambassador for the underdogs, which is something we can all relate to. Because of that, I'd say his title as everyone's idol is pretty accurate. Maybe future games will get to see Bandana Waddle Dee come more into his own, but as it stands, I mean, just look at him. It doesn't matter if he's a fleshed out, complex character, the guy is just delightful. And in a franchise like Kirby, that's all you really need. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, maybe you want to check out some of my other videos. You know, maybe the ones that aren't about Kirby. If I end up stuck having to talk about a single franchise for the rest of my YouTube days, at least I get to talk about one that's super near and dear to my heart. Thanks again for watching, and thank you for 1000 subscribers.